Okay, game programming wiki. Uh, this is just a list of, list of pages that people have been asking for on the game program, programming wiki. And uh, I see shaders are on here and this is the one that we're going to do right now is uh, how to set up a simple shader and uh, in vb.net and uh, render it out and see what happens. Close this up. I'm going to start up Visual Studio. And uh, we're going to do a new project. A uh, new project. And uh, we're just going to do Visual Basic Project. Uh, we'll keep it in the learning folder. And we'll call it uh, Basic Shaders 1. No, just call it Basic Shaders. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is just set up a basic application that will uh, and uh, set up some basic uh, functionality for rendering out uh, to DirectX. Uh, browse. We're going to go to C Drive. DirectX. DirectX, this one, that one. Okay. Okay. And now we have our DirectX added to our references. And we're going to go into uh, properties for this project. And uh, we're going to change our, we want strict variable naming and we're going to do some imports Microsoft dot direct X okay and uh, we're just going to set some window properties just going to set it up as a basic uh, basic uh, dialog fixed dialog uh, no minimize, no maximize, and uh, I'll set the text, I guess. Basic shader, and uh, let's set up the code for it now. Double click. Uh, let's see. Uh, private uh, graphics says drag 3D. Device and uh, uh, oops, has uh, presentation parameters. Oops, PRE. There we go. At BP, we're going to set up windowed. We're going to set up auto down to uh, dip 16 and uh, get rid of that there. and uh, enable auto depth stencil uh, what else do we need here uh, swap discard uh, I think that's about it there Graphics equals 3D device uh, standard monitor. We'll use our hardware. Uh, let's see. Hardware window handle me and uh, yeah, we'll go for software vertex processing and our present parameters. Okay. should set up our device and we're going to we are going to show our form first and then uh, the next thing we want to do is to we're going to need a, an object uh, an effect object so uh, a private uh, trick 3d effect Effect 
is going to be uh, EFF effect equals direct 3D effect from file. Uh, give it our device. Uh, the source file, uh, we'll call it uh, that's simple dot effects. Uh, no include file, so we're just going to type nothing. Uh, flags, uh, we don't need any flags, just specify none, and uh, we're going to specify nothing for the pool, so it should look like this. Get rid of that. And in that, and that's what it should look like. Now, uh, what else here? Okay, now we can start our render loop while me created and then application do events okay now we're going to begin this actually we're going to clear the scene so graphics clear clear our target and our stencil I keep getting DirectX appended to the beginning there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little cheat here Imports in my row Microsoft. Okay, and that should fix it that. Let's show uh, DirectX and Z buffer, and we want to set our color to zero and our Z depth. Uh, what what is it now? It's a uh, it's one and zero. I think that's right. It has been a while since I've actually written code by hand. I usually just use my DX9 tools library that does all this for me. Graphics dot uh, let me see, begin scene. Yep. Graphics end scene. Graphics present. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot something here. We're going to need a mesh to render our skybox with. So private uh, private mesh as 3D mesh. And then uh, we're going to have to load that mesh. So, uh, what would I do here? Mesh equals mesh from file dot x. That's their file name. Managed and our graphics device, and then that'll load our mesh object. And uh, this mesh, this skybox object already has uh, texture coordinates and everything inside of it. Uh, actually, I can show you what it looks like here if we jump over the my documents and skybox. And this is our skybox here. As you can see, it's just uh, you only see the inside of the box when I rotate it you don't see you're only looking into the box you can't see out of the box that's what we want so you can close this and go back to our code here uh, okay now for the good stuff go effect begin we're going to begin zero and uh, what this will return is how many passes, how many rendering passes there are within that effect. So what we need to do is to uh, dim passes as an integer, and then we go passes equals begin zero, and this will store how many passes we have. So then we, all we do is go dim idx integer. Idx refers to uh, the index is just a short way of writing it out. For idx equals 0 to passes minus 1. And then we go to effect p, oops, e, f, f, e, c, t, dot. We begin pass number idx. And then when we're finished that pass, we will go effect f, e, c, t, dot, uh, end. Actually, that's wrong. We should go. This should be after here. 
and that'll tell us this is the pass that uh, we will we want to uh, render with. It'll just go through. Uh, if you have multiple passes, uh, some effects use multiple passes, so uh, it's best if you put everything in a loop like this. Uh, what do we need to do here? Okay, mesh, draw a subset, and zero, and that will draw our mesh. Uh, one more thing I need here is a texture, or otherwise it's just going to be a blank box. Before I forget again, private uh, texture as that texture. And uh, that'll just be, I'm going to need a texture. What was the texture I was using there? Let's see here. Uh, media, images, uh, it's back, I think it was. Previous. Yep, that's the one. So I'm going to call this, when I load up my texture, equals dot direct 3d dot texture loader from file back png graphics is our device and we're just going to leave it uh, like that that's all we need that's all we need okay uh, we're going to have to set our texture so graphics Set texture, first texture, text. Uh, let me see here, what else? Um, okay, there's, uh, there's a few more things we're going to need here. We're going to need a... Uh, let me see. Before we begin rendering anything, we're going to need to set up our matrixes. So, uh, graphics transform uh, world equals just a standard identity uh, graphics dot uh, transform view equals matrix look at left handed uh, new vector 3 0 0 uh, I wonder how much I should put this but I'm just going to take a second here to check my notes. Uh, there we go. Uh, 500, mega 500. And our target is going to be nothing. And our camera up is uh, the y axis is going to be up, so new vector 3. Oops. 0, 1, 0. Uh, there's. I'm going to change this here. World matrix. Um, view. World matrix. View. And projection MAT matrix as matrix. So the world matrix, uh, actually I'll just, I'm going to need one more variable here. I'm going to need a rotation variable as single and uh, plus equal, uh, what should I put it? Uh, let me see here. Yeah, I'll just set it to something small like that. Oops, I put an F on that one. Okay, uh, we have a rotation variable, we have our world, we have our view, uh, world matrix, so world matrix, oops, multiply by, oops, matrix, uh, rotation yaw pitch roll. Uh, rotation pitch, uh, what should we do our pitch for? Uh, how about we use a sin rotation here? Math sin uh, rotation and 
we're not going to roll, so we're just going to. Oh, I need this. Let's see, single. Oops. Single like that, and uh, that will rotate. And uh, world matrix equals matrix identity. And then we rotate our world, and we set the world to the graphics, and then we set up our view matrix to our look at, and we are going to need a projection matrix. So uh, let's see here, projection, projection, projection equals matrix dot uh, perspective LH uh, perspective field of view LH uh, field of view our field of view is uh, let's, uh, let's see yeah we'll make our field of view 45 degrees so math pi divided by 4 and our aspect ratio alright our aspect ratio uh, aspect and uh, our near will be zero and ten thousand. Ten thousand view distance. We're gonna projection and aspect is going to equal client size width divided by client size height. Uh, Uh, you'll notice that I uh, I use client size because that is what we're going to be rendering to. I don't use. I recommend that you don't just go to with the width because uh, sometimes the skins, like you can see that my windows are using a uh, a skin, and some skins will uh, they won't they'll be larger or smaller. So the actual size of the window compared to the actual client size is going to be different. So it's always best to use the client size, the actual part of the form that you are going to be rendering to. That's the part that you want to set your aspect to. And uh, this is our aspect. And uh, that's done. Okay, now uh, I guess I should show you that uh, if we go into your form. What I mean by client size is, uh, let me show you here, pen. This is our client size here this client size refers to everything inside of your form about that big like that and uh, the if you use the actual window size uh, again like I said uh, I'm using a skin right now and uh, the, the height like this height right here that may change uh, depending on what skin you have so you shouldn't go by the size of the form. You should always go by the uh, by the inside, by the client size, client size of your uh, form there, because this is the area that you're going to be rendering to again. Uh, that's basically it for the code for right now. I, I'm going to create my simple effects file, and I'll actually uh, actually no, I'll copy over these files here first. And then we'll get into actually writing the the effects file itself. So we are going to need from our images. We're going to need our back. Copy that. Uh, where did I save my thing to? It's under learning. Learning. Simple. Uh, simple. Oh, basic, basic shaders. Bin directory. You can paste this and uh, back, 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 back. And we want media or skybox. Copy that. And we can jump back into our basic shaders. 
paste that. Okay, now the files we need are there, are back in our skybox. And uh, I'll just create a new file for our shader. Now I have to say that you're going to have to bear with me because I don't usually do this by hand. I usually use uh, ATI's Render Monkey. It makes things a little bit easier. But uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to I'm going to try and wing it and see how far I get here. Uh, we're going to need. I think I'll start with the technique first. So. Hmm, that doesn't look right. Uh -huh. That's why I use ATI Render Monkey because it knows how to spell better than I do. Uh, what are we going to call our technique? Uh, we'll just call it uh, Transform Texture. T U R E. Uh, we're just gonna, just going to transform it and texture our skybox mesh. So that's basically what we're going to do. And again, we're using high-level shading language, so it's uh, a C language, unfortunately. Uh, and this is where our, our, uh, our render passes come into play. If I bring you back to our code, if we go down here, this is where we get the number of passes that we will have from our begin statement. So we'll go back here, and we're going pass and the name of our pass is just going to be p0 that's fine indent this and we are going to call the compile compile our uh, vs uh, one one oh that's hang on a second there, there you go uh, and the method that gets called the uh, the entry method for the vertex shader. We're just going to call we're just going to call it transform. And the same thing is for the pixel shader, the PS uh, one one. We're just going to call that texture color. Now uh, a technique is it's just a technique. It's like a, it's an effect. It's a, a water effect. It could be an explosion effect. Uh, it could be any number of effects. It's uh, in any technique can have uh, a number of passes. I mean, we're only using the one pass here, but you could have uh, five, six, seven passes, uh, depending on how much hardware, what kind of hardware you're running it on. Uh, we are telling the shader to compile our target uh, vertex shader version. There's we're up to version 3 right now. The first one was version 1, but we don't actually use version 1 anymore. We use version 1.1, and this is our VS, which is Vertex Shader. 1.1. Uh, transform is the method that's going to be called as the entry point to our Vertex Shader. So when this gets executed, when this technique gets called, the first thing is going to happen is going to call pass 1, and it's going to run our transform. And the same thing is true for our pixel shader. It's going to call the texture color. And these two methods here and here are the ones we're going to write right now. So we are going to write. Actually, I'm going to do a save here before I get too far ahead of myself and something happens and I end up crashing on me. Uh, where did I save it? My projects. Look at all the projects. Look at that. Big mess of projects. Learning. Oh my god, look at all the learning projects. Where did okay, basic shaders. Uh now we'll save it in the bin directory. And now what did we call it? We called it something here. We called it simple dot effects, if I remember correctly. And save it. Okay, now we're gonna write the, the methods out here. So transform no uh, V O I D uh, Void in the C language is equivalent to uh, nothing in Visual Basic uh, language. So 
when you see void, it's actually nothing if you're converting into Visual Basic. So we're just going to have a void. It's not going to return anything. Transform and uh, brackets. And we are going to need, as a vertex shader, you can accept specific inputs. For example, if I only wanted to have, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say I only wanted uh, float for position. Oops, position. And uh, I only want, I only need uh, position and texture coordinates. So I'm just trying to remember all these commands here. Uh, texture coordinates. It's only two and uh, in input uh, text C oops C O O R D O O R D S okay text uh, C chord zero first set of texture coordinates within our our vertex and input input position as a position as the first texture coordinate uh, and we're going to need, I'm uh, just going to copy this here, I'm going to change this to out, and this to out. I'll, uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to explain all this stuff for you here, just after I finish writing this. Uh, output and output. I think that's everything. <laughs> I bet you the C++ guys are laughing at me right now. Yeah, look what I just did. It's supposed to be brackets. There you go. That's what you're supposed to have. You're supposed to have brackets and then these things start up here. So, now that that is done, I can explain the inputs and outputs. Uh, as of when you create a vertex uh, format, like for your uh, geometry, you could have uh, just a position in your vertex. Like uh, I'm gonna, I should easier to if I just show you here. Let's define a vertex here, a custom vertex. So uh, public structure, public structure, and we're gonna call this custom vertex. Okay. And uh, it's going to be three points in the vertex, the uh, x, y, and z. So public x, y, z as singles. And uh, this is just like a custom vertex I can use for you know rendering my geometry. You should all be familiar with this if you're uh, looking at a, a shader code. Uh, if uh, and uh, say we need texture coordinates as well, so we're going to go public uh, tu tp as single. Okay, this is just like a custom vertex. If we go into our uh, simple shader as an input, that's what the in is for. As an input, we are the inputting a uh, a single, which is you know a single. A float that you see here, a float four, is just like a floating point, which is a single in Visual Basic language. And uh, the four represents how many bytes. There's four bytes, so in a single, in our single here, at least in VB.NET, there is. So what we're going to use is a, a float four, and that's going to the four singles, four bytes. The name of our parameter, and the position. Now the position refers to the X, Y, and Z as a position of the vertex. And uh, these are all uh, specific to a high level shading language. Uh, I, I'm still just a beginner at this, so I'm not going to talk too much about the keywords, but uh, I'm just basically going to show you how to, uh, how things are structured and just a very basic uh, shader just takes the uh, texture coordinates from the from the mesh and spits out a spits out the uh, and uh, spits out the pixels to the uh, rendering. Uh, the
the outputs are outputs. So as a vertex shader, you're going to have an input. These are the vert these are the parts of this vertex that you're inputting. The parts of the vertex that are coming into your transform and these are the parts that you're going to be sending back out. These are the new values for that vertex. These are the ones that they're going to be changed and manip manipulated. And again, they're it's basically identical a position and uh, texture coordinates. You'll notice the zero at the end of the texture coordinates. Texture cord zero refers to the first set of texture coordinates in your ver in your custom vertex. For example, if we had more than one texture coordinates, which you can have. For example, if you you wanted your mesh multiple textures, you can have multiple uh, texture coordinates. So if I was to specify uh, texture one, it would refer to the second set of texture coordinates. So we're going to just do a basic transform. Uh, I forgot something here, didn't I? Okay, we are going to need a float 4x4 four four, uh, world view projection as a world view view project and uh, sampler okay now uh, the float 4x4 four four is different than uh, the float 4. Float 4x4 four four refers to a 4x4 four four matrix, which is uh, it's just a standard matrix that you see here. Defined as a matrix is the 4x4 four four grid of values. So uh, the w later on I'm going to come back to this uh, world view projection and I'm going to show you how to set uh, you can set this variable from within your program. We will s write in our program how to set this variable. And uh, the next thing is the sampler. The sampler refers to the texture that we will be applying to our geometry. And the name of our sampler we're going to call uh, texture sampler. And now we can finish writing our transform method. So we are going to go, we want our output position to be equal to multiply, multiply our input position, input position by our world view and projection matrices. Now that we got that, and as for texture coordinates, we don't have to do anything with those. We're just going to pass them and copy them over. So, oops, I spelled that wrong. Output texture coordinates. We're going to equal input input texture coordinates. I'm going to put the little cursor on there, and that should just about do it for the transform. Now this multiply is just uh, is just a multiplication, just like in VB when you type uh, when you type star, it will multiply uh, this multiplied by the values in that will give us our uh, uh, gives our output position, and uh, we're just assigning our output to be the same as our texture coordinates. And now we need texture color, so V. Oh no, we don't want void. Actually, yeah, okay, void will work. Uh, void uh, texture color like that. Oops. Void texture color. Now we're going to write our pixel shader, which is texture color, and we're going to need an input and an output. So uh, it's a little bit different than our pixel than our vertex shader, I should say in that uh, we don't need to worry about our position. So for example when I go like this uh, we don't need to we don't need to specify both our position and our texture coordinates. We can 
simply specify only our texture coordinates and that will work just fine. We don't have to specify the extra parameters. Uh, high level shading language and the way it's compiled will automatic automatically uh, figure out that okay he's only he only needs to work with the texture coordinate so that's all we're going to put in there. It will uh, it'll tie everything up in the back end. And we are going to need that there. We're going to need an output, and our output is going to be the color of the pixel that we're going to be rendering out. Like uh, after it finishes uh, passing through, after our vertex finishes passing through our transform method, it's going to be brought into our uh, texture color method. So we're going to need float2 diffuse color oops color zero I spelled that uh, diffuse wrong there diffuse color okay oops that should be four there's four parts to a color and that is uh, your RGB A A for alpha red green and blue and uh, so as an input we're going to get our texture coordinates, we're going to spit out a single pixel color called diffuse color. And this is very easy line of code we're going to write here. We're going to write uh, diffuse color equals text2d and we're going to get uh, our texture sampler by our input texture coordinates. T-E-X-T-U-R-E Texture Sampler Okay, now our diffuse color is going to equal our uh, this texture 2D method this is a, a method that we use to get the color value of a texture uh, from within a texture we're going to use our, our texture coordinates and it's going to uh, grab them from the sampler texture and these are the, this is the location within sampler texture that we're going to get our uh, our color from and we're going to store that color in diffuse color and since the diffuse color is our output is going to be uh, returned back out uh, that's all we have to do that's our basic uh, shader right here. Just going to give it a once uh, quick look over here. Uh, uh, let me see here. Da, da, da. Uh, if you're not familiar, one thing I can suggest, if you're not familiar with the, the C language, like uh, all these curly braces and uh, you know, it, all that kind of stuff, and uh, all the lines have to end in uh, the semicolons and uh, I would I would get familiar with basic C uh, style syntax before you start uh, working with uh, shaders and shader files. It'll make it a lot easier for you to uh, to dive into this if you if you don't know about the C language and you don't use it a whole lot. Now I personally don't use it. I rarely use it. Uh, only when I have to. Uh, it, it can be a little difficult to uh, to trudge through to get through uh, all this uh, stuff. Another, well, it's not necessarily a problem, but it's a pain in the butt because again, C++ is case sensitive, and you'll notice. See how I typed in color zero and texture zero as uppercase. You have to type those as uppercase. That's the way the uh, the language is set up. And if I was to type, uh, for example, you'll see. So lowercase diffuse color, lowercase diffuse color. If I was to type capital D on that, it would throw an exception when it tried to compile it because it's expecting the exact same casing as what you typed as the parameter. Just something to keep in mind that it's shaders are case sensitive. So you have to make sure that all your uh, casing is uh, set up properly. I don't see anything wrong with this, so I'm just going to save everything. Uh, if something's wrong, I can just come back to it. 
Uh, let's go back to our code. Now, what do we need for our code? There's a few extra things we're going to have to add just before we render. Okay, see, our matrixes, this is what we're going to need. So, we're going to have to define. Now, if we go back here before we start that, remember in the beginning when I set up this uh, this property here, this this matrix worldview projection, that's the one that we need to set here so that our our world rotates and that we can see it rotating. Uh, and this is, it'll multiply our input, our position of our vertex by our world view and projection matrix. So we go back into our code, we're going to go effect, set value, and we're going to go, uh, let me see here, direct, direct 3D dot effect from string. Oops, that's not right. Effect handle from string. That's the one we want. And we are going to go copy world view and we're going to paste it. And there you go. And then you're going to need the value of that property. So we're going to need uh, go like this. Just gonna cheat and paste it. We're gonna need a matrix, so go back here. Dim as matrix equals matrix identity. Worldview matrix projection. Multiply but our world world matrix, our world, and then our view, and then our projection. And this will create our world view projection. We're multiplying our world view and then projection. And that is going to be set. We're going to set that world view projection that's inside of our shader file. We're going to set the value of that inside of our code. So we're going to go set value of our worldview projection and that will rotate our world and give it some animation and uh, we can't forget to set our technique as well so effect technique equals the technique we're going to use is the technique we specified in simple which is transform texture so we're going to go down we're going to say technique equals transform texture. Uh, we're going to have to use, uh, where is it here? Scroll down. Copy this. Scroll up. From stream. Uh, one of the, it's kind of a annoyance really, it's not so much a problem, but uh, everything gets wrapped in an effect handle. Inside the effect handle here. So you kind of have to type in all this stuff just to specify that it's a transform texture is the one technique that you want to use. Uh, I've been uh, I've been making this video in uh, you know sections at a time, so I didn't have to make one big large video, and uh, I just had it on pause for a minute and I noticed. I tried to run the program and I had a few problems getting it to run and I this is wrong here this should be 500 and we're just going to go back and edit these uh, make these subtle changes in the code and this should be number one and actually the, the, the code I'm writing here is based off of existing code that I've already written and uh, so that's why I know that these values are wrong. Now, uh, all right, our shader. There's something flawed in our shader, and it's something I missed. So I'm going to show you that right now. So I think that's everything. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to save it, run the program, and I get this error. Error in the application. That's not good. So I'm going to break and you can see it's on my line right here. It's usually a c when you get something like this chances are it's something wrong in your shader file. 
and you should check your shader file. So I'm going to stop this. And what was wrong in our shader file was something I forgot to type in, which is vertex shader equals compile and shader equals compile. Uh, apparently, you need these uh, in the beginning. Vertex shader, obviously, at uh, oops, S H A D E R. Anyways, vertex shader uh, just lets the compiler know that you're compiling a vertex shader and you're compiling it for, again, the 1.1 uh, version and uh, transform. And you just need these this uh, vertex and this uh, pixel shader here defined in the beginning. And uh, there's something else that has to do at the end of these transforms here, but I'm not going to show you that right now. I'm going to run the program again. And you're going to see. Oh, I got the program. I got an error again. And it's giving me on the same when I try to create my effect. This, I think, is crazy. What you're going to see here. Now, watch this. Why did we get that last compile error? Because of that, and because of that. Isn't that nuts? Two little characters. Oh, you got to add the two characters for it to work. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Talk about getting specific or what. Okay, now it should work. Everything should work, I think. Unless I missed something. Just quickly look through here. Uh, yeah. Okay, this should work. We're going to set our technique to texture transform. Da, 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 da. We've got our world view projection. We're setting it. And we're going to render. Okay, everything should work. Play. Nope. Oh. Oh. Oh, I still got an error. Okay. Uh, okay. So there's something still wrong in our effects file. So what is it? Uh, the only thing it. Aha! Uh -huh, there we go. Two Ds in shader. There you go, that's the wrong thing right there. Okay. Save everything. Everything should be working. Okay, now we're going to try it. Push play. Hey, there we go. Check that out. Isn't that cool? And that'll rotate around. There's our basic shader. And we can quit that. Uh, that's basically everything I think everything I needed to show you uh, yeah uh, I think that's everything I think that's it that's everything I wanted to show uh, I will be I have plans to make more uh, demonstration videos for uh, to do more about shading uh, on the game programming wiki website uh, if you don't see any new videos from me on that site uh, within a few weeks or so uh, just give me an email at uh, createdbyx uh, at gmail dot com just uh, email me at uh, this email address and uh, harass me to uh, make some more videos for you guys okay that's it